In this session, we will discuss count-based analysis of RNA sequencing data. We imagine or we have a data that has been summarized at a feature level, where by a feature I mean either a gene or an exon. So for each sample, we know how many reads map to a particular feature. And we have that summarized as an integer, so we know exactly how many reads we, we haven't, we don't have like fractional measurements. Let's take an example data set, the airway packets, uh, and see how that data looks like. This is naturally stored in a summarized experiment, um, which, uh, which, which, which we have here. Um, we can see that we have uh, eight different samples and we have 64,000 different uh, features. We have uh, integer counts inside of the features, uh, and uh, that tells us something about the expression level of the different um, uh, data set. This is uh, completely unnormalized data. The variable of interest for this particular comparison is the DEX uh, covariate, which uh, tells us whether uh, the sample is uh, belongs to the treatment group or the untreatment group. As always in, in R, uh, the reference level for a factor is the first level, and in this case here is the treatment. So uh, if we start fitting models to the data here, we're going to find differences between from, from treated to untreated. And that's a little unnatural, so we uh, use the relevel function and we uh, reset uh, or we change the reference level. Uh, so now you can see here that the reference level is now uh, the untreated uh, uh, category. This is a, a this this summarized experiment contains a rich uh, piece of information on what uh, what the gene model is. We can see here for the first gene we have the seventeen exons uh, that are part of that particular gene. So getting this uh, gene by a sample count matrix is uh, not easy, and there are no uh, consensus way of doing it. In order to do it, you have to uh, get an annotation or you have to select some features, and you have to select a way of uh, counting the overlaps. Uh, here you particularly have to pay attention to um, what happens for a gene that has multiple transcripts, as we see a lot in humans. Do we, uh, are we interested in exons that belong to all transcripts from the gene, or are we interested in exons that belong to any one transcript of the gene? It's well known, or it's known, that uh, the choices you make in constructing this count matrix does have some impact on the statistical properties of the data and your results. And there's no consensus on the best way to do it. You can do this using uh, uh, various uh, packages in R. There's a, feature, there's a feature counts function from an R package called R subread. Uh, you can use this, uh, you can use uh, genomic alignments and uh, uh, to do counting, and uh, uh, finally, a very popular Python library called HGSeq uh, uh, is also often used for this. And then a lot of people uh, have rolled out their own um, solutions for it, including myself. So we will take as a starting point this count matrix, and we're going to show how we uh, fit uh, statistical models that are very similar to, or, or func functionality that's very similar to uh, to what we've seen in the Lima packets to this type of data. Uh, the two leading packages for analyzing this type of data is a package called SR from the same authors uh, as Lima, or uh, DEC2 uh, from another group. Uh, that's obviously a continuation of the DEC packets. Uh, uh, DEC2 uh, allows uh, more complicated designs. Uh, so both packages, in, in, in some ways, uh, do kind of the same thing. They fit a, a class of models called generalized linear models uh, based on the negative binomial distribution, but they differ a lot in the uh, specifics of how they implement these models and how uh, the models borrow information across uh, genes, um, typically to estimate uh, the variability in the data. So what's going to follow now is not really a thorough uh, statistical analysis using these two packages. It's rather a, an extremely shallow uh, walkthrough of the steps you go through in order to use the packages. Uh, 
really uh, using them and getting believable results uh, out of this data set. So other data sets requires uh, more um, work on understanding the statistical properties of the models and then how to best use them. We're going to start off by uh, test running the XR package. So let's load that. So the XR package in the same way as Lima has a number of uh, package specific uh, containers. And unlike Lima, we can't just run XR directly on summarized experiments. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take our data from the summarized experiment and convert it into a Lima class. The Lima class for uh, XR, or not a Lima class, in, into an XR uh, data class. The data class is called DGE list, uh, and we construct it like this. Basically here, we have given it a count matrix, which is uh, pretty straightforward, and we have given it a group variable, which is the main uh, group of interest in, uh, in, in this setup. Now, uh, there are two pieces of information that would be nice to stick into this DGE list. Uh, one, one piece of information is the phenodata, uh, and another piece of information is information about which genes were actually profiled in the experiment. Uh, the, 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 the phenodata uh, uh, comes into, in, in, into a DGE list through something called the sample slot, and weirdly enough, we cannot give uh, the samples information directly to the DGE list constructor. So we, we see that uh, a sample thing has been constructed, but we couldn't give it additional columns uh, when we when we construct this our, our DG thing here. So if you want to take our additional uh, data uh, uh, on these or additional covariates in these samples and put them in here, uh, we have to create a new data frame and put in and put in these samples thing here. So that's what happens here in the next couple of commands here. Uh, uh, I merge. Uh, the existing data frame from the DG samples with the call data from the airway data set. Uh, I have to convert my call data into a, a classic data frame because that's what SR uses. Uh, and the by argument here means that I'm merging based on the row names. The two uh, data frames have the same row names. So uh, now I have a, a slightly more rich uh, uh, set of phenotypes here. I also would like to put the genes uh, or information about the genes in here. And here we're a little bit constrained uh, by the fact that the DGE list uh, 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 has as uh, the, the way it stores information in genes is in a data frame. And what we had from the airways data set was this rich uh, uh, representation of which exactly which exons we were counted on. So we can't really put that into the uh, in, into the DGE list, but we can do something that uh, is at least a minimum, which is we can give it the gene names. If we look at, uh, at, uh, um, at what's in here, let's look at what's in here. We don't have any information, and at least we would like to have some, some names uh, uh, on the genes in there. So uh, um, I do that here. I basically take uh, the names of the row ranges, and that's, yeah, that's basically the names of, of the different genes profiled, uh, and uh, put it into a data frame and put it into the gene slot. So let's see what, what came out of this. Basically a name column with the name of the gene. So now we've set it up, and the first thing we do uh, in XR is we calculate something called normalization factors or effective library sizes. So uh, a lot of people, or at least when RNA-seq was uh, started out, used uh, the total number of map reads uh, to calculate something uh, called RPKMs. It has later been shown that, uh, sta that you have to standardize for different library sizes at different sequencing depths in the different samples, but the best way to do this is not just to count how many reads were mapped. Uh, um, why that is, is a, is a slightly longer discussion, but uh, Lima has uh, a support for estimating the effective library size, and uh, in, in, in uh, the calc norm factors um, uh, function, and let's see here, uh, 
uh, you can see that uh, inside this samples data frame, there's now a factor called norm.factors, which tells you about how much the uh, different data sets have to be scaled up and down in order to have the same effective library size. We can see that there is actually a library size stored in, in, into the Fino data here. And we can see that the different samples have actually been sequenced uh, to a very similar depth because you know the known factors are very close to each other. Now, the next step we do uh, when we fit an HR model is that we uh, estimate the dispersion or basically the uh, variability of the data. And uh, we do that in two steps. There are various ways you can estimate the dispersion. We've got to estimate something called a checkwise dispersion. And in order to do that, we first have to estimate a common dispersion. That's kind of estimating basically a situation where a dispersion parameter, assuming that the dispersion for all genes are the same, which is probably unrealistic. And then once that's estimated, we can estimate a checkwise dispersion. It looks a little weird that we have to call two very similar commands after each other, but this is uh, intentional. So now we have estimated the effective library size, we've estimated the dispersion parameters, and we are ready to uh, do some model fitting. As usual, we uh, store our information about uh, the design and our question of interest into a design matrix. Uh, this should be uh, familiar to you by now, uh, it's at least for the simple case where we have a two group comparison. The design matrix looks as, as we usually see. Uh, and uh, now we fit the model. We fit a GLM for each gene, which we do using the GLM fit uh, function. The next step is to figure out uh, 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 for our coefficients or contrast of interest, um, which, G, uh, which genes are, are, are most significant there. We do that, we can do this in various ways with SR, but uh, here I do it using a likelihood ratio test using the GLM likelihood ratio test. The coefficient equal to uh, means that I'm testing the second coefficient in the sign matrix, uh, which is equivalent to the coefficient representing different, or which is equal to the coefficient, coefficient representing differences between the treatment and the untreatment group. And I can get a list of my top tags, uh, the ones that are most differentially expressed between uh, cases and controls, or treatment and untreatment. So this was how we do it with SR, so let's take a look at how we do it with DEC2. Uh, and let's start by loading the library. So like SR, in order to use DEC2, you have to put your data into a DEC2 container. Unlike SR, it's actually quite easy to do because we can convert it directly from a summarized experiment. We set it up like this, and now here we see a, an important uh, thing to pay attention to, that we need to store the design matrix inside the data object. Furthermore, uh, when, we, uh, when we do things uh, later on, uh, uh, the odd, so if you have multiple variables in the, in the design, which, is, which you might need when you have more uh, complicated uh, yeah, designs, uh, what DEC focuses on is the last variable you have listed. Now, once we have set it up, it's actually quite easy to fit the model because all you run is you run DEC on, on, your, on your data container and it estimates some things. You can see that it's actually very similar to what happens with XR, right? We can see it estimates size factors or library sizes or norm factors. Then it estimates dispersions. Uh, and uh, then it fits uh, the model and the test. So this is really a lot of different XR commands wrapped into one. Now we uh, get the results out by calling results on the uh, resulting object. And uh, this data frame or this object here is not going to be sorted. Uh, we can have a look at it. Uh, uh, it's perhaps a little hard to see. But uh, this is not uh, 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 sorted according to, for example, the adjusted p-value, which we have over here to the, to the right. Uh, so I uh, order it according to the adjusted p-value, uh, and I print it again. And now we have kind of the top uh, differentially expressed uh, genes according to DEC2. 
And if you scroll up and you do a little bit of comparison, you'll notice that there's actually no overlap in the top five most differentially expressed genes between the two methods. So this was a quick rundown on how you kind of uh, utilize these uh, uh, packages. There's a lot of information in the vignettes and in the uh, papers uh, lying behind the packages. And don't take this as a um, as a full, uh, uh, don't, don't take this session as, as, a, as the only thing you need to know about uh, using HRMTC. Those are, these are rich statistical tools and they require uh, some understanding before they can be successfully used. But now you have a little bit of an idea of how to do a, a very simple analysis.